Hey guys, Easy Tech Review here with a follow up video to the first one that I uploaded a few days ago on the HP NV14. This one's just to show you some initial impressions after having used it for about five days now. And uh, you might notice the unit is in front of me right now. It's not powered on, but actually it is. But nothing's shown on the monitor. Why? Because I just wanted to show you guys real quick one of the unique features I mentioned of the HP NV14 which is the dual monitor output capability it has so you'll see behind the NV I have two external LCD monitors both being powered and driven well not driven by the NV14 this is a 28 inch monitor I have and on the left is the 22 inch as I mentioned earlier this NV has an HDMI output which I'm using to drive this 28 inch and a mini display port outlet which I'm using with an adapter to drive the 22 inch on the left. Now HP sells the mini display port to DVI or VGA adapters for around $50 but a fun tip for you guys is I'm just using the Apple one that you can get at any Apple store or apple.com for $29. This particular unit is a mini display port to DVI adapter and it works just fine. So again, a unique feature of the NV14 dual monitor output. Unfortunately, it doesn't support all three at once. It seems I tried through all the settings. But it'll be useful. This feature could be useful for, for example, day traders or whatever. If they want to set the NV on the side as a desktop mode and they could have their main sc bigger screen or one of the screens as you know stock ticker and then the other screen for chatting or browsing or whatnot. So it's a nice little feature that NV14 has. Alright, I'm gonna take out the externals now. Now one of the things I wanted to mention was that this is a great laptop but a lot of people who purchase some have some issues out of the box build issues build quality issues and I just wanted to show you guys some of them so that if you do decide to get this model and you receive it in the mail you can uh, after opening the box check out if your unit has these features these uh, build issues one of them is keyboard flex some people mention they have it now mine has a little bit of it, but honestly it doesn't quite bother me that much as some other people, but if you'll notice, mine has it uh, around the O, the P area. If I'm pressing down on the P, you'll notice a little bit of flex, but it doesn't really bother me. When I'm typing, I don't really notice it. Another issue that would bother me, though, it's, it's cosmetic, but it's pretty noticeable, is the HP logo that's lit up thankfully my unit doesn't have this problem as you can see my unit is pretty evenly lit but on some models the light source is slightly shifted say to the top right a little bit so only say 75 percent or in some cases I've seen some with 50 percent were lit and the other was dark so that would be pretty annoying if you had that just to know that your logo is not fully lit so that's another thing to look out for so that's two thus far another one that I also have a little bit of is some people notice a gap between their touchpad and the body uh, most of the time it seems to be on the left side there's a very tiny gap I can't quite stick a thin credit card in the gap but I do see it it's kinda hard to see in the video but some people, it bothers some people to be honest it doesn't really bother me also for a lot of people the trackpad is slightly raised above the palm rest so it's supposed to be I believe flush but many people have raised trackpads honestly it doesn't really bother me neither I have it too slightly but that's one of the things to look for probably the most well talked about issue though is CPU wine some people can hear it, some people cannot. Apparently it's a 
phenomenon caused by the CPU. All the Intel CPUs have this known issue, but they haven't really done much about it. Where if the CPU processor is idle, it's not doing anything really, like if you just let it sit there, it'll produce a very high pitched like whining sound. And some people can hear it again, some people can't. But for those who can hear it, it really bothers them because when they have their computer next to them and they're say they're just leaving it to do whatever and not doing much on the side, they'll hear the constant CPU one. So that's something to look out for. For my particular unit, uh, it has it very slightly when I stick my ear up next to the vents, but you know, again, it doesn't really bother me. So that's okay. All right, well, another thing I wanted to show you guys was in, some of you asked uh, if I could do some more further comparisons with the MacBook Pro. So here we have a Apple MacBook Pro 13 inch. This is the April 2010, the latest version with the NVIDIA 320M integrated graphics. Okay. This is the HP Envy 14.5 inch laptop. This is the MacBook Pro 13. Now, many asked to do a thickness shot to see if we can get a shot of how thick they are compared to each other. And hopefully you guys can see that. The Envy is slightly thicker, but not by much, to be honest. Uh, it doesn't really... I, I don't really notice it in my bag, really. But the Envy is slightly thicker, but not by much. Yeah. Another thing I wanted to show you was... Uh, one of the major features of the Envy is the Radiance display. And the MacBook Pros are known to have some really great screens. So I just wanted to show you, let's put this in real quick. Okay, this is max brightness on the Envy. Here's the MacBook Pro. Max brightness. Let me pull up a yeah. Okay. So, the same picture. This is a nice background picture. You can see that the quality is comparable. Um, by far, in terms of PC, Windows PCs, this NV14 has the best quality screen I've ever used. Um, I always miss using the MacBook Pro when I switch away from it because of the screen quality, but I found that while using the NV, I don't feel that at all because the quality of the NV screen is just as good. And unfortunately, since the first video I made on Monday, uh, HP actually raised the price on the NV for most users. What I mean by that is, the base price of this used to be $1,099. $1 on their website now, if you go the price, starting price, will be nine ninety nine. So you think, oh, awesome! They dropped the price a hundred bucks. Actually, no, because initially when they released this, it came standard with a sixteen by nine, sixteen hundred by nine hundred radiance display. But right now, the base price nine ninety nine comes with a, a lower spec. They call it a bright view, thirteen sixty six by seven sixty eight display, which is you know noticeably lower in resolution and I don't have one so I can't really tell you the quality difference but most likely lower quality in terms of contrast uh, picture quality whatnot so if you do want the 1600 by 900 radiance display now it's an ex extra $200 option so they lowered the base price by 100 bucks but they're giving you the worse quality screen, lower resolution screen, to upgrade back to this 1600 by 900 radiance display would cost you $200 extra. So in reality, jacking up the price of the screen 200, lowering the base price 100, so they actually jacked up the price $100. So it's kind of a tricky move by HP, you gotta be careful about that. If, if for all you out there who wants the 1600 by 900 
radiance display, which to be honest is one of the main drawing features of the HP Envy 14, you're going to have to pay an extra $100 versus the really early adopters who ordered earlier on. So just wanted to point that out. But yeah, like I said, I've been using this laptop as my main machine since this past Monday for about five days now. And it's a really nice unit. It's probably the best that I've used so far in terms of portability, performance, and weight ratio in terms of a compromise between the three. It's I haven't really been feeling that it's super heavy in my bag. I commute every day. Uh, I don't really notice it bogging me down. The width, the size is fine. I, I can whip it out on the train and use it in the climbed up seats, you know, not really bothering the person beside me with a big laptop. Um, the specs are great, you know, on paper, com uh, considering this is a 14 inch laptop, 14.5 inch core i5 or i7 quad core if you want. Uh, ATI 5650 uh, graphics. One thing to note though, as another tricky thing by HP, is this is a premium laptop, right? So it has latest Core i5, Core i7, and the ATI 5650 video card, which is supposedly great for games. But when you look up the specs on ATI's website, AMD's website, I'm sorry, for the 5650 Radeon, the specs list that it could range from 450 megahertz CPU core to 650 megahertz. Now I've used many other different laptops. Uh, one of them in mind being a it's a very inexpensive, great value Acer Aspire 5740G, which only costs like $700, but it comes with Core i5 uh, and as well as the ATI 5650. So the specs are very similar to this. It only cost $700 at the time uh, on the sale. But the performance in that was really good and I was really happy with it. And I was expecting the same performance off of this because on paper, you know, it's the same Core i5 processor and the same AMD ATI 5650 video card. But what HP did was they put the lowest end on the spectrum. ATI said this video card can be 450 to 650 megahertz. They chose 450 <laughs> megahertz. So most other manufacturers go for the middle road and clock their ATI 5650 to 550 megahertz. But HP, for whatever reason, clocked this particular video card in the HP NV14 to 450. So I ran a 3D Mark uh, 06. Uh, I used the basic version, all default settings. This unit only got like 6879. 6,879 3D marks, whereas most other laptops on the market with similar specs, uh, Core i5, i7, and the ATI 5650 usually get around 8,000. So it's pretty disappointing. Um, to get back to the 550 that all the uh, 550 megahertz that all the other models have, we have to overclock, which is disappointing. But other features that I want to mention for this. Uh, is the haptics stuff that you can't really mention on paper like the overall quality of the materials it's just really nice to have a laptop built out of metal you know it's, it feels nice when you use it. it feels like you're having a quality premium product versus you know again that Acer Aspire 5740 I talked about before it was made out of glossy plastic, you know. But anyways, thanks again guys for watching. This is a quick follow-up video. Thank you.